So what type of rosettes on bridles are actually appropriate for Civil War cavalry? This week on the 11th OVC, the small ornamental brass rosettes found on bridles in the cavalry. There are many different styles out there, but which one is most appropriate? Well, the short answer is none of them. In fact, the circle brass rosettes that you find on a lot of reenactors tack today is definitely not the norm, definitely not the usual, and definitely not found in the standard rank and file. But do you find rosettes on officer's horses? Of course the answer is yes. So if the answer is none of them, then where did the idea of using rosettes on bridles actually come from? Obviously, it must have had a, a root or a source in something, and it didn't come from nothing. And the answer is actually, of course it did. It actually has a very similar history to the one of breast collars. Now, previously we did do a video on breast collars. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and click right here and watch that because the similarities actually are pretty funny. So where did those brass rosettes come from? They actually can be found in use far before the Civil War. And similar to the breast collar story, rosettes are also used a little bit after the war as well. For example, in the 1850s uniform manual, it specifies that bridles for the dragoons were to have a brass circular plate about one and a half inches in diameter of each extremity with a beaded edge and a number of the actual regiment one inch long raised on that circle. Now the enlisted men's bridles on that same manual differed only by having the letter of the company instead of the number of regiment on that rosette. But then moving on to the actual Civil War in the 1861 Ordnance Manual, the branch of the artillery actually specifies round brass rosettes, they don't use the word rosettes, but a blank round brass ornament on the bridles. More specifically, it states that the artillery headstalls are to have two brass ornament circles, 1.8 inches in diameter, raised in the center, which is then mounted in a circle of leather two and a quarter inches in diameter, which is all fastened in one loop on the brow band. But in a conspicuous contrast, in that same 1861 ordinance manual, when it talks about cavalry headstalls, it mentions nothing about the brass rosette or the brass circle. Then if you look at the 1862 ordinance manual that specifies all the equipment that the cavalry is supposed to have, it also lacks any mention or description of a round brass rosette or any type of decoration or ornament for any of the headstalls. However, in that same 1862 manual, the artillery headstall with this brass rosette still is mentioned. And as you keep looking at war dated ordnance or tax specifications, there is no mention of brass rosettes or brass ornaments in the manuals, contracts, or any other specifications when it comes to the cavalry. So what does all this mean? That means from a contracting or production or definitely a rank and file standpoint, rosettes on cavalry bridles just weren't really a thing. Which tells you right there that they weren't normal, usual, or general, or of course the acronym NUG that we always like to use. Well then maybe the follow up argument to that is maybe the rank and file were using bridles with rosettes that were from contracts and bridles from the 1850s. Well a simple look at thousands of images on the research arsenal produced more than 450 images of mounted troopers or tacked up horses in which there were a total of three enlisted men with rosettes. A total of three. Now if you do the quick search of rosettes on the research arsenal yourself, you'll see that there's more than three images with rosettes. In fact, there's a lot of images with rosettes, but the other than the three that I just mentioned, all the others were officers. And overall, if we're talking about the standard rank and file of the Army of the Potomac, Army of the Cumberland, Army of the Tennessee, whatever we're talking about, it's actually pretty clear that the norm was having no rosettes, even if you were an officer. Now what this photographic evidence actually does is that it backs up the fact that rosettes would actually be proportionally rare to see in the standard rank and file, even if they were using bridles from the 1850s. Now combine that with what we said before, that any new bridles or headstalls with rosettes would have had to have been from either officer's horses or from the artillery headstalls and bridles that actually specify the use of those brass rosettes. But something that's actually interesting to note, even from the artillery standpoint, is that photographic evidence of the actually called for and ordnance specified brass rosettes on the artillery headstalls were even pretty rare for the artillery, again, according to photographic evidence. One of the best examples is one of my favorite photos of the second U.S. artillery. And in this photo, there are plenty of horses for reference, and they all seem to be missing the hint that they should have had brass rosettes on their headstalls. Again, the only ones I'm able to make out in this photo are ones of officers. 
So the simple answer is that the brass round decorative rosettes found on many head stalls today would not be appropriate for the Civil War era. The funny thing is that they come back in the 1870s to a limited degree or in specific context, very similar to the breast collar example in our previous video. And one of the things I love about researching is that if you would like to look through the 400 plus images that we discussed yourself, feel free to log on to the research arsenal and filter by images that are mounted, and then you can add the cavalry and artillery filters to see the difference between the two groups, and of course add the keyword of rosette in your search. It was fun doing the research for this video and looking through some of these images that have so much detail in them. And of course, guys, if you want to aid us in helping us preserve history by scanning, transcribing, and tagging photos, ledgers, regimental reports, and histories, and so much more, then become a member of the fastest growing Civil War research community on the internet, which is the Research Arsenal. We have thousands of photos tagged with every single item in the image, which actually made today's topic easy to research. We have the largest collection of digitally transcribed and searchable letters and diaries on the internet, period. In addition to all the federal quarterly ordnance returns for every active major federal regiment in the army. And if you're not familiar with the quarterly ordnance returns, what that allows you to do is to see exactly what weapon and accoutrements your favorite regiment was issued, not just issued, but actually carried on the field or had with them on whatever campaign you're interested in. So help support our mission by transcribing and digitizing all of these regimental documents and ledgers and ordnance returns to help us bring the story of the soldiers that were in these units to life. So as always, until next time, take those rosettes off your bridles and we'll see you in the field. And of course, ride hard.